Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have the Apple Watch as a digital minimalist device. Um, this one is a case that I got from Etsy. It is $7 and essentially it modifies your Apple Watch to look like a phone. <laughs> of course, it's definitely smaller than a phone, but I think you kind of get the idea. It's a device that you know has a screen and you'll be able to use it for the basics, the basics only. And I'll stress that in just a second. Let's get over the frequently asked questions right here. And a lot of apps are available on the Apple Watch, but most of them do not work without a phone around. So in order to make the most out of this device on the go, you would have to bring a smartphone, which is definitely not what we want. So definitely, if this is not what I'm reviewing here, I'm not reviewing the Apple Watch plus an iPhone, I'm reviewing what can the Apple Watch do on its own without an iPhone. You will need an iPhone to set it up. So you set it up and then you can set it up as a standalone device or as a companion device. If it's a companion device, it essentially acts as an extension of your iPhone. So whatever messages and calls you get here, you will also get them here. I set it up as a standalone device, meaning this has a phone number that the iPhone will not have. And you can set it up like that uh, via US Mobile. I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to check it out. Uh, so essentially the plan costs $6 and you can again set it up with that and this will have its own phone number. I will go over what can be done and what cannot be done completely on its own, just the Apple Watch itself. So in this configuration, uh, we're going to start with maps because that is a function that it's going to be useful and it's going to be able to give you directions here and there. Uh, so as you see, it's pretty smooth, you know, and here's the maps application. You're able to search for rest, uh, restaurants, uh, gas stations, fast food, maybe coffee. Uh, if we go to coffee right there, it will give you, hey, there's Atlas Coffee, you know, there's Dutch Bros, there's Black Rock. Uh, so let's go for Novo Coffee. Um, it asks for extra permissions and you're able to get a little bit of directions. I don't think it's going to be amazing uh, at navigating, but it gives you like a little bit of like, okay, hey, here's the ETA, here's the different routes that you can take. So the maps application that it comes with, it's actually useful when it comes to that uh, those terms. Now, the main drawback is going to be the battery life. It's, if you use the maps application on its own, the battery life is going to be drained uh, quite, quite a lot. So, also, this device has the ability to do transit. So if you do transit, not only maps uh, to walk or go different places, there's an app that works standalone. That's called the transit app. And it gives you like, well, here are the buses that are coming around you and what is their next timeline, which is extremely useful. As you see right there, it tells you like, hey, this is where you are in the map and you're going to be able to do that. Now, basic communication. I highly recommend that you use it for maybe codes and the occasional text message. If you text somebody with iMessage on the standalone mode, it will be able to work without any issues. And this has um, the messaging application has voice mode, as you see, I'm using it right there. And it also has kind of like, maybe like drawing mode, I will call it. So you will have to like, you know, kind of go like, hello, right there. I think it didn't caught the H. There you go. So this one is less intuitive and it's kind of a bummer. The bigger versions of the Apple Watch, so the non-SE, have an actual keyboard. So you can actually type or glide type with those versions. So I can recommend those if you're going to go full in into this maybe different way of approaching digital minimalism. Uh, but as you see, it's not going to be a super immersive conversation uh, between you know you and somebody else. If you want to send regular SMS text messages, uh, that will not be available at all. Um, I tried texting my wife. If you're texting, iMessage is great, but if you try to send a text message standalone, it will not work unless you are um, actually sending it with the companion as a companion mode. There are two different ways. One is standalone mode. The other one is companion mode. And in companion mode, you need to have the same number both on the iPhone and on the Apple Watch. 
Um, that is also a, a possibility on US mobile if that's something that you're you're into. But most of the time it fails. Right now it hasn't given me the um, uh, kind of notification that it failed, but it will come in just a second. I don't know why it's unable to send those. Uh, maybe it's just a configuration from Apple. Uh, there are other applications, more listening-based applications like Outcast. Outcast is a standalone application that you can use for podcasts, which I've been able to use uh, without any issues. You're able to search. You're also able to call uh, without any issues. I highly recommend that you pair this with Bluetooth headphones because the speaker is doable, but it's not the best experience um, in my opinion. It's about a six out of 10 just because of the volume is just quite low. Now it does have other applications that you can uh, get like the wallet for NFC payments, translation, uh, and this amazing application that I found uh, is called Streamlets. Uh, it is a radio application and it out will actually play through the speaker or any headphones that you have. I've enjoyed my setup over the last week with this because I think it's a good experience it's a fluid experience. It does have a few extra utilities and applications like the Transit app uh, or even, for example, here I downloaded this app called X for Telegram, which allows you to send messages via Telegram without any issues. Um, and that's just something that is very good. I think this probably timed out. Um, something may have happened with my application but you just bring whatever device, uh, maybe a tablet or maybe an iPhone that you set up Telegram with, uh, and you scan the QR code, and then you should be good to go uh, to go and actually get your text messages that way. And that is probably what I would recommend for communication is getting a third-party app like iMessage or something along the lines of Telegram in order to be able to pair with the standalone Apple Watch. It will be able to track your workouts. Also, it will be able to give you some weather, um, as you see right there. And again, it's not the most amazing experience, but that's the point. It will give you utilities. It will give you a good set of maybe the basics, and that's about it. But that's pretty much all you need. And when you compare this to something like the Nokia, a basic one, then you pretty much have the same utilities. You can have also extra things like maps, a calendar, syncing, calculator, uh, contacts, of course. And you can have uh, email if you'd like. Um, of course, you're not going to be replying to a lot of your email here. Uh, but this one, for example, the Nokia doesn't have that, whereas this Apple Watch configuration would be able to have it just for informational purposes because you're probably not going to sit and compose an email on this screen but you still have access to it. You still have access to second factor authentication. So for example, this one does receive text messages uh, via second factor authentication. And right there, you can see Telegram send me a code, um, a specific one. So again, it's a decent compromise between a smartphone and a dumb phone, but both of them together. Now, it may not work for everybody. Uh, personally, I don't see myself doing this for the long term. And the reason why is because it's maybe for me, the battery life is just not worth it. So the battery life on, for example, the Light Phone 2 is uh, way better. So it's two days. The battery life on this, uh, I just started this video and I don't have the LTE on. And I've been talking maybe for like, what, six, seven minutes. And it's already dropping 1% just being on Wi-Fi. So I constantly have to go to low power mode. Uh, which disables pretty much everything, and that's better. But if you set up the cellular version, so for example, if I set it up and I make sure that I'm running on cellular and downloading things uh, without the low power mode, it will run through the bar battery extremely quickly. We're talking about maybe like 1% per minute or so. Maybe 1% every two to three minutes if you're really not using it. But if you're using it for any utilities or anything like downloading or actually going into maps or, you know, downloading a podcast or whatever it is, then I, 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 I can tell you that it's going to be a very difficult experience with the battery life. And that's why I personally don't like it. Now, there is another solution, which is getting a quote unquote better Apple Watch, something like the Apple Watch Ultra, but 
now we're talking, see right there, drop 98%. Now we're talking at a, about an investment of $799. And that's just too much money, in my opinion. You should get a used Apple Watch if you want to get to this, um, in my opinion. Uh, but if you are already in the Apple ecosystem, maybe this makes sense for you. If you have any questions about this device, the Apple Watch, there are definitely other reviews out there. But if you're looking for a specific thing, does this work standalone? Does this app work without the need of an iPhone? I'll make sure to put it in the comments below and I'll try to see if that works. Uh, thank you for watching. And again, as always, I'll be interacting and see you in the next video.